let us resume the lecture on uh, NP tool on physiology and especially we are now dealing with endocrinology and reproduction. So, we initiated with uh, the overall architecture of the endocrine system, which consists of hypothalamus, which is sitting at pretty deep into the brain, which is controlling the pituitary, which is one of the major endocrine gland. And we talked about the thyroid, parathyroid, adrenal and the gonads and the pancreas. So, I give you an overall view or overall position of these different organs and we talk little bit about the uh, structure of the pituitary, which consists of an uh, consists of two parts anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary. And we talked about that anterior pituitary receives the hormones from hypothalamus via a local blood vessel, whereas posterior pituitary, which is also called as neurohypophysis, is another name for that. That receives that does not have any uh, blood vessel to receive hormones from hypothalamus. Hypothalamus directly have neuronal projection on the posterior pituitary on the neurohypophysis and those neurotransmitters which are secreted or those uh, hormones which are secreted because of the nerve signals are then transported from neurohypophysis or posterior pituitary via a blood vessel to its target organ so with this what we will do we will talk about the uh, the intricate circuit between the hypothalamus and the pituitary okay so let's talk about that circuit okay so, so today we'll resume with the circuit between hypothalamus and pituitary. Here it is uh, worth mentioning that yesterday when I showed you that how the higher centers of the brains are regulating hypothalamus. So, hypothalamus depending on the situations sends two kind of signal, either it will send a inhibitory signal or it will send a stimulating signal or in other word you can also call the stimulating signal as releasing hormone or inhibiting hormone. Okay. So, say for example, it is like this. So, pituitary has to say for example, secrete a particular uh, hormone say x. So, pituitary needs a signal from hypothalamus. So, when pituitary has to secrete x, then pituitary will release will receive a signal called x releasing hormone from hypothalamus. So, x r h and when pituitary does not need to secrete that particular hormone, then pituitary from hypothalamus will receive a signal called x i h, which i h stand for inhibitory, inhibitory hormone. So, it will say you do not secrete that particular thing. So, it is kind of a very tightly controlled loop and what tells hypothalamus is could be the downstream metabolites and everything which are produced because of x. Okay. So, it is kind of a very nice feedback loop. So, what we will do now what I will enumerate are all the inhibiting and releasing hormones secreted by the hypothalamus which influences pituitary or dictates pituitary's role in the further down the cascade. Okay. So, let us enumerate the hormones which are released. So, let us put that at two different level. So, this is the level of say hypothalamus, the first box, the let me put the second box as the pituitary box and then we will put all the downstream cascades which are there. Okay. So, these are the different neurons, which are present in hypothalamus, because just uh, okay. So, now here is the blood vessel, which is reaching 
the pituitary this is the blood vessel. So, the first one which will be which is release releasing hormone is called PRH prolactin releasing hormone or PIH. So, this is prolactin okay, and RH stand for releasing hormone and IH I I H stands for inhibiting hormone. Okay. So, prolactin is involved in different kind of milk production and all those kind of situations. Okay. So, then this provokes pituitary to release prolactin, this is all about anterior. So, find it we are talking about anterior pituitary. This prolactin then reaches its target and does its function target tissue. Okay. Same way the next important very very important hormone is called growth hormone. G H R H stand for growth hormone releasing hormone and G H I H stand for growth hormone inhibiting hormone. So, these hormones when growth hormone releasing hormone when it reaches the pituitary it promotes pituitary to secrete growth hormone. Growth hormone has wide range of function in all our growth related activity and it has target pretty much all over our body. So, there is rarely any such place where you would not find a growth hormone releasing hormone uh, growth hormone receptors. Okay. Then comes the next set of all hormones which are extremely tightly regulated in terms of uh, reproductive maturity and everything. These are called G and R H gonadotrophin releasing hormone G and stand for gonadotrophin okay. and the hormones which are secreted by the pituitary in response to gonadotrophin releasing hormone are FSH and LH. FSH stands for follicle stimulating hormone, follicle stimulating hormone and LH stands for luteinizing hormone. We will talk about this hormone while we will be talking about the reproductive aspect of human system. Okay. And these FSH and LH which are secreted by the pituitary leads to the secretion of the different sex steroids by the gonads. So, their major target are the gonads. Okay. There are other targets, but at this point we are only talking about the gonads, okay. not to make things complex. And here you will see there is a gonadotropin releasing hormone, but I am not showing any gonadotropin inhibiting hormone, because this is under the feedback loop of some of these have different feedback loops at different level and apart from it the sex steroids which are produced have the feedback loop. Then we talked about corticotrophin releasing hormone and all the three hormones now what I am I will be talking about they do not have any inhibiting hormone here. This is called CRH corticotrophin corticotrophin releasing hormone okay. and corticotrophin releasing hormone leads to the secretion of ACTH adrenocorticotrophin and by the pitu anterior pituitary and then this leads to the secretion of the cortisol and cortisol secretion takes place in adrenal which we will be covering very soon. Okay. Adrenal gland which is present in the kidney on top of the kidney. Okay. Then you have something called TRH, thyroid releasing hormone. T stands for thyroid. Okay. So, this thyroid releasing hormone reaches the pituitary and pituitary release something called 
thyroid stimulating hormone, SH is the stimulating hormone. Okay. When thyroid stimulating hormone reaches the thyroid gland and leads to the secretion of the T 3 and T 4 and all other thyroid hormones. Okay. So, now if I summarize it, so at the level of hypothalamus, so this is the hypothalamus level. So, hypothalamus is secreting almost seven different kind of inhibiting and releasing hormone, prolactin releasing hormone, prolactin inhibiting hormone, growth hormone releasing hormone, growth hormone inhibiting hormone, gonadotrophin or the reproductive releasing hormone, corticotrophin releasing hormone, then TRH thyroid releasing hormone. And the anterior pituitary secreting, and I am not talking posterior, I will talk about it later, because these are the situation where all the signals are coming through the blood vessels. This is those uh, local blood vessels. Okay. So, anterior pituitary is secreting prolactin, growth hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, ACTH and TSA, thyroid stimulating hormone. Now, prolactin has its target, is a very specific hormone, which is involved in kind of milk production and everything. Whereas, growth hormone has a wide target all over the body, and whereas GnRH has its major target through secretion of FH uh, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone to the gonads, which are mostly responsible for all our sexual behavior and sexual development. Whereas, CRH is corticotrophin releasing hormone leads to the release of ACTH from the adenocorticotrophin from the anterior pituitary, which acts on adrenal gland, where the cortisol is being released. And this cortisol has wide range of function, which will be coming very soon. Whereas, the TRH thyroid releasing hormone leads to the secretion of thyroid stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary. Thyroid stimulating hormone goes to the thyroid, where thyroid is being thyroxine is being synthesized. And that thyroxine then shows its function all over the body. And if you look at it, overall. So, if you come to this particular slide again. So, you see that at every level there is a feedback loop which is function. So, higher centers of the brain which receive signals from all over the body. They ask hypothalamus to secrete inhibiting or releasing hormone. Then this acts on pituitary from pituitary it acts either directly on different systems or at different second or third tier of endocrine systems and which again sends feedback loop. So, it is a complete feedback loop of neuroendocrine. So, you can pretty much call this kind of situation as a neuroendocrine axis. It is a long axis where this these are the, the higher centers of the brain are the neural component of it and the whole endocrine. So, this whole neuroendocrine axis uh, plays a key role in almost all the physiological processes, which happens in any uh, of these living systems, especially human being or any other mammals or higher life forms. And it is a very well coordinated system, and they get affected by several ways, as before I move into it. So, say for example, you people must have heard this, you know the traces of uh, pesticides in the crops, which we eat leads to endocrine uh, misfunction or endocrine disruptor or endocrine enhancer. Okay. You see, sometimes people have hair growths in unusual places, okay, or some kind of other ailment, because most there are several compounds which are currently used in the food products or during food production in the form of pesticide, insecticides, or um, some other you know growth stimulants or anything, which we are not even aware of how they are influencing this neuroendocrine axis. And it is so tightly regulated that those picomolar or nanomolar traces, once they enter inside our body, they create havoc, and uh, all our uh, endocrine system comes under under intense uh, stress because of this. So, with this, I will move on to with this, just kind of giving a bit idea, uh, bit of idea, or that why uh, we are now kind of you know why FDA or any other food and drug administration of any country is kind of very concerned about what we are adding to the food, because that is the major source. Because whatsoever we eat, it is eventually from the blood vessel, 
those are being absorbed by different parts of the body and that is what eventually influences all your function. So, so these are some of the things which uh, I appreciate if you people go online and check what are these you know endocrine disruptors, how they kind of you know influences and sometime they can even lead to disease like cancer or other neurodegenerative diseases and slowly we are trying to understand how different factors are influencing different uh, endocrine or neuroendocrine functions. Okay. From here let us move on to the posterior pituitary and I have as I have already told you that posterior pituitary is directly under the neuronal control of the hypothalamus. So, it does not unlike the anterior pituitary which is being supplied from a local blood vessel from hypothalamus in case of posterior pituitary it is not so. And the two hormones which are involved in posterior pituitary are one of them is oxytocin the other one is ADH. Okay. So, now let us draw the circuit for posterior pituitary. So, here you have the hypothalamus hypothalamus and here you have the posterior pituitary. I am just putting a PP for your, uh, so here is the direct neuronal connection and from here this is the blood vessel which carries the secretion or hormonal secretion by the pituitary. Okay. So, one of them is oxytocin the other one is ADH antidiuretic hormone. These are the two hormones which are secreted by the posterior pituitary. Oxytocin has two major targets one is the breast the other one is the uterus. These are the two places where oxytocin majorly acts and ADH has one of the major target is kidney and what it does in the kidney as well as in breast and uterus. Okay. Now, let us come to that the function of ADH is it acts in response to hypothalamic osmoreceptors. Okay. In other words when the osmolarity changes in the body or there is a excess loss of say water or some kind of metabolites, this leads to the activation of the ADH specifically in a situation where there is a there is a increased concentration of sodium. So, increase per me. So, what basically it happens is that it once again ADH leads to the increase the permeability of the and we will come to this this distal tubule of kidney uh, distal kidney and collecting duct and ensures more water reabsorption and thereby maintaining the optimal level of sodium. Optimal level of sodium ion is being maintained by antidiuretic hormone and it basically ensures when there is a body is running out of water, it ensures that you know it is being restored. Okay. So, this is one of the major function. So, what is the function of oxytocin? Oxytocin stimulates the contraction of smooth muscle and this is essential during childbirth when the fetus has to come out. Okay. So, this is especially in the uterine muscle sometimes oxytocin injections are given because that leads to the movement of the fetus from the uterus and especially it is done in cows, buffaloes or even in human being where the small dose of oxytocin helps 
the women to you know allow the fetus to come out slowly. Oxytocin also help in uh, milk release from the breast during the time of breastfeeding, because it increases the contraction of the of the muscle because of its action. So, and there are response to that. Okay, how basically it gets regulated. Okay, so these are the two major functions of oxytocin and ADH. Whereas ADH is regulating the water concentration and thereby maintaining the right sodium concentration. And kidney plays a very critical role. And once we'll be talking about kidney, I'll again touch this point how ADH is playing this role. And oxytocin, which directly acts on the uterus as well as in the breast. In the breast, it ensures that the milk is being released properly during breastfeeding and uterus. It ensures that the fetus slowly and gradually moves out of the women body during childbirth. Okay, so, these two are very, very, very critical for our development. Okay. Now, from here after, so now we have kind of covered the hypothalamus and the pituitary and we have talked about the neuroendocrine axis. From here I will move on to the adrenal, which is under the regulation. So, if you go back, let me try just, so this is your so, this is this is the part I am going to try now talk about talk to you. This is the part, okay. This is the part of the circuit where corticotropin releasing hormone leading to the secretion of ACTH by the pituitary, anterior pituitary, and then this anterior pituitary is working on the adrenal gland, which is so the location of the adrenal gland is out here. I have drawn this, okay. So, if, if this is the kidney from where the If this is the kidney, so here is the adrenal gland sitting. So, this particular gland has a very interesting structure. If you look at this structure, if you see the cross section of this, this is something like this. It has an outer core and it has an inner core. If you take a just a cross section like this, and the outer core, so if, if, if this is the inner core, and this inner core is called medulla. This this is called the medulla, and whereas the outer core consists of three layers: outermost layer, middle layer, and the inner layer. And all the three layers have different functions. And we will come to that. The most innermost layer is called zona reticularis. The outermost layer is called zona glomerulosa. And the middle layer is called zona fasciculata. These three layers have three different secretion, and the inner layer has again a different secretion. So, the medulla is involved in the secretion of catecholamines. Catecholamines, I have not introduced the term catecholamine, but catecholamines are what we have studied in the autonomic nervous system, norepinephrine, norepinephrine and epinephrine. Okay. So, I told you that epinephrine and norepinephrine also functions as a hormone. Okay. So, the medulla is involved in the secretion of epinephrine and norepinephrine, whereas the other three layers, zona fasciculata, zona, zona glomerulosa and zona reticularis are involved in other different other secretion. So, the innermost layer which is your uh, zona reticularis, this layer zona reticularis is involved in the secretion of androgen, and we will come to the individual function of it. Okay. Whereas, uh, zona <coughs> the middle layer the zona fasciculata, let us see this here zona fasciculata this one is involved in the secretion of glucocorticoids and the outermost layer which is zona glomerulosa is involved in the secretion of mineralocorticoids mineralocorticoids okay and the major mineralocorticoid secreted by zona glomerulosa is aldosterone 
and the major glucocorticoid secreted is cortisol. Okay. So, these are this is the kind of the functional uh, structural come functional uh, distribution of the different layer of adrenal innermost layer the medulla first layer which is the adjacent layer to the medulla which is the zona reticularis which secretes androgen then the middle layer which is called the fasciculata which is secreting glucocorticoids or cortisols or so, uh, yeah cortisols and then you have the outermost layer which is zona glomerulosa which is secreting your mineralocorticoids or aldosterone okay so now what we will do we will talk individually about the different uh, different of these corticoids okay so another important thing for you people to realize is this corticosteroids are all synthesized from one of the very potent molecules called cholesterol they are all synthesized for cholesterol and uh, if you remember while I was talking about the membrane structure we talked about the cholesterol and told you it is a very very important molecule and it has multitude of functions starting from uh, modulating the fluidity of the membrane and other things it has uh, one of the major function is that it is involved in the synthesis of corticosteroids. Okay. So, now we will move on to the mineral corticoids. Okay. So, the mineral corticoids we will be talking about the aldosterone. So, what mineral corticoids are? So, in the outermost layer, mineral corticoids. Okay. So, one of the major function of mineral corticoid is it maintains the normal concentration of sodium and potassium in extracellular fluid, maintains concentration of sodium and potassium in ECF extracellular fluid. The next major function is that and the oh, I already told you aldosterone is the major uh, aldosterone is the major mineral corticoid and it is stimulated by it is stimulated the secretion of mineral corticoid is stimulated by first uh, increase potassium concentration in extracellular fluid this is one factor the second factor is increase activation of and i'll come to that this renin angiotensin system while i'll be talking about kidney okay at this time i'm just bypassing it and then when there is a decrease in sodium in ecf extracellular fluid and when there is an increase in ACTH in blood. These are the four situation when aldosterone secretion is being enhanced and what is the function of this, how it works, function or effect, we call it effect. So, what it does essentially is that again coming back to the membrane what I taught you, it affects the sodium potassium pump of kidney. And in other words, what it does during that situation, it helps to by regulating this pump, it as I told you just before this slide, there is an increased concentration of that ensures that kidney get rid of brings down the potassium concentration and maintains the sodium concentration. So, this is the way mineral corticoid work. From here, we will move on to the glucocorticoid. Glucocorticoid. Okay, which is in the middle layer of the adrenal. Glucocorticoid is involved in the metabolism of this is extremely important in terms of metabolism of carbohydrates, fats and proteins. And it is a cortisol is the major I have already told you cortisol is the major glucocorticoid which is present and it is stimulated by this is very important it is stimulated by first situation when it is stimulated is the ACTH level in the blood 
again regulated by pituitary. Okay. Thus, ACTH is regulated by cortic corticotrophin releasing hormone, which is coming all the way from the from the hypothalamus. Okay, and this response happen during some specific situation, and this is very interesting. It mostly happened during extreme emotional stress. This is very interesting to understand, when there is an extreme emotional stress. So, especially in the situation of trauma, starvation and anxiety. So, coming back, now if you try to look at it very holistically. So, here is a situation, when a person is in extreme stress in terms of you know some kind of a trauma or anxiety or a fear or something. Say for example, that is the time when uh, some of the areas like amygdala or other higher centers of the brain gets affected. So, those centers sense a signal to the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus leads to the secretion of corticotrophin releasing hormone. Corticotrophin releasing hormone travels along the blood vessel comes to pituitary, anterior pituitary. From anterior pituitary, ACTH is secreted. This ACTH come all the way to the adrenal, from adrenal in the from the second or the middle layer of the of the cortex of the adrenal, the glucocorticoids are being secreted. So, you see you see it is it's kind of a very interesting loop, it is a fantastic chemical circuit, which is regulating all these processes. And any deviation from this just because of some kind of stray chemical, which is entering your, your body or some other situation, could really hamper this very neatly balanced chemical machinery, which is functioning for ages now. And it has adapted to the changes of human life in a very interesting manner. Okay. So, let us talk about that, how okay, after talking about this, let us talk about the the function or the effect how it works on them uh, works on the body. So, what is essentially does is that increased level of cortisol leading to the skeletal muscle to break down the protein and releases the amino acids into the blood. Okay, this is the first thing which happens. Okay. Once again, again I am losing track of the slides. Okay. The next thing happen is that, it dictates the liver to increase glucose production, through a process called gluconeogenesis. So, this is the second thing which happens and we will talk about gluconeogenesis as all we will be talking about the digestive system and this. This is in other word you can call it, it is a fuel mobilization process and this fuel mobilization effect is a very long term effect. This is not something, it is a short term effect, it is a fairly long term effect this glucose mobilization. Then comes within the medulla, you have this sorry before the medulla you have this adrenal androgen, which is secreted by the innermost layer. This is basically a sex hormone, it is a male sex hormone and it is not as potent as the pure uh, like testosterone, which is secreted by the gonads, but this has a role in mostly the role it plays is in sexual behavior, not in sex uh, sexual development, but especially in the sexual behavior, this particular hormone has a role to play. Okay. So, this is very important to realize. And then we talk about the, let me go back, that will be easy, talking about uh, the, the medulla, which is secreting the catecholamines, then epinephrine and norepinephrine. We have already discussed about the function of epinephrine and norepinephrine in terms of 
they are involved in increasing the heart rate, they are involved in myocardial contractility, they are involved in <coughs> other different kind of lipolysis function or the breakdown of the lipids. So, if I had to summarize this whole process, if you look at it. So, this adrenal is playing a very extraordinary role under the influence of at four level of influence, the higher center of the brains, which are controlling your anxiety, fear, energy requirements. They dictate hypothalamus, hypothalamus dictates pituitary, pituitary dictates adrenal and then adrenal from its four different layers, including the medulla, outer cortex, innermost cortex and the middle cortex, which is secreting the glucocorticoid, mineralocorticoids and the adrenal androgen and the epinephrine and norepinephrine secreted by the medulla dictates a plethora of activities all over your body, starting from uh, regulating your body under stress, extreme stress, regulating your water mobilization in the body, by regulating the uh, absorbing the ions and water in the distal tubules of the kidney. And to a totally diverse area from this be, uh, regulating the sexual behavior. So, and on top of that the epinephrine and norepinephrine has a dual function in terms of they are involved in the heart rate, increasing the heart rate and the lipolysis process, they increase the myocardial, uh, myocardial rate, contraction rate. So, you see I mean it is covering a very, very wide range small organ sitting on top of kidney plays a very critical role. And this is what I wish you people to appreciate that this whole system, this whole neuro endocrine axis along with as, as we will proceed further as we will be talking about the immune system is a very, very interesting loop, where things are happening in a very well controlled manner. And uh, with this I will close on this lecture, and uh, I will request you people to go through some of the uh, nice pictures, which are given online in terms of the neuroendocrine axis, that will give you a better feel about it. And I expect you people to go through some of the endocrine disruptors, or uh, pesticide residues, or insecticide residues, which uh, does a very uh, which are fairly damaging to our endocrine system, that will help you to appreciate what we eat and where we should be careful enough. Thanks a lot.